Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, hello everyone. I welcome you all once again to my uh, course on developing soft skills and personality. This is IIT Kanpur giving you through NPTEL MOOC format. We are on week 5, module number 4 and lecture number 28. This week the focus is on technology and how it is influencing communication, particularly human communication. In the last two lectures, I have started introducing to you about mobile and how it is affecting us and then slowly I uh, shifted to the focus on email and how much we are rather misusing emails because we do not understand the basic principles which are guiding emails as well as developing our soft skills and personality in general. Now in this one to continue with the same thing that I did last time but this time I will focus more on how not to send emails in the sense how not to send bad emails. So this is very important because sending good emails are going to create good effect but then sending bad emails it is better that you do not send them at all. So before we actually start the discussion let us take a quick look at what I did before uh, particularly I focused on the 5 P's which I call as the cardinal principles of soft skills and personality development planning, preparedness, persuasiveness, presentability and then perseverance. So, even in terms of habit if you look at it. So, you need to plan to develop a good habit or change a bad habit. Suppose let us say uh, you cannot get up early in the morning. So, you have to plan, so you have to prepare like setting an alarm or asking somebody to wake you up or keeping some attractive things like buying a new walking shoes or a jogging shoes or a, a new costume for uh, jogging. Okay. So, that is uh, preparedness. Persuasiveness usually uh, in terms of influencing, convincing somebody. Suppose you have to convince somebody to change a new habit, you have to use your persuasiveness. Presentability is the overall effect, uh, not just the appearance, the decoration that is used, but also the inner content that determines how uh, good you are in terms of quality. And finally, perseverance is continuing, taking efforts not to stop because you are discouraged by something. As I said, some of you have been uh, emailing me, sending, uh, putting your ideas in the forum saying that you are able to continue, one or two say that, so we are stuck, we uh, tell us how to continue. So I would say perseverance, like go back, start again, continue, so do not lose heart in terms of forming good habits particularly do not lose heart. Now email writing is an art okay. and I would rather say everything you do in terms of communication, in terms of developing your soft skills is a very subtly learned nuanced art. The difficulty in that is it is very difficult to teach overtly but then if you learn it and gain from it you know that uh, you have it and then it gives you a lot of confidence and people start liking you, people start approaching you, people start listening to you and people run after you. They want you to come and talk to them, they want you to talk to somebody and influence the person. Now in a different context, we were applying these principles and we were looking at the emails and then we looked at some email examples which violate all these above principles. In this one again I am going to continue with the same. Uh, mode of thought, but I am going to highlight how not to send really bad emails. Let us look at some examples and analyze them which will prepare you for the theory part which I am going to discuss in the following lectures. Look at this, this is the thought which I concluded last time. Before you learn how to send emails, it is important to unlearn your wrong learning by knowing first how not to send emails. So, this is the most important thing that you should know. How not to send emails? I am not going to theorize. Many of you have liked that I am using a practical approach. Here are the email samples that I have got 
uh, from uh, email interactions with various people, most of them my students, some of them my colleagues, some of them uh, vendors, some of them unknown people asking for uh, uh, suggestions, queries, applications, etc. But most of them are bad email examples. Now, look at a simple one like this. Hello ma'am, I want to go to my house. So, this is a leave application sent through email. So, I gonna bunk your classes for the next two days. Give me two days leave as I have to go out of station. Cheers, Shokshi. Look at the next one. Hi sir, urgent matter, very important, suffering from severe stomach pain, cannot come to write the exam, give me re-exam, give me an easy question paper as headache is allowing me not to focus on study. Lots of love, Arjun. Obviously, do you think that the receiver at the other side, the teacher is going to grant the first one Shakshi leave and the second one re-exam or giving a better question paper that will help Arjun? Obviously, no. Let us look at the part in which it has gone bad, awful, worst. Look at the salutation itself. Hello ma'am is too informal. Unless you know somebody so thoroughly from your childhood and who is a teacher who likes you, who is a well-wisher, who is your family friend and then if the person is not known to be on the safe side, it is respecter ma'am or dear ma'am. Even some people in Indian context do not like dear ma'am, but there is nothing uh, so close in terms of dear, but it is still considered a formal way of addressing a teacher. The other language that is very informal and colloquial uh, kind of language, abbreviated use, I want to. So, it is like I want to go to my house. So, I gonna, I am going to bunk is again uh, a very wrong use of a word where you should have said I will remain absent okay, or I will miss your classes for these ones. So, bunking shows a willful playful uh, missing of classes for the next two days. So, it is important you just say from this date to this date, give me is bad, please give me two days and then leave in leave itself you make a spelling mistake, it creates a very bad impression. As I have to go out of station, again spelling mistake in station and probably this should come first. So, respected and dear ma'am or respected or dear ma'am, as I have to go out of station for an important marriage or an important exam that I have to attend to tell the reason. So, I will not be able to attend your classes on these days. So, hence I request you to give leave. Now, the conclusion cheers. So, that is again bad. It is as if you are writing to your close friend. It should be yours obediently in this context and then the name and look at the next one. The first bad thing is no capital letters at all like this continuously. It is not a telegram that you are sending. You are sending a letter in which you are requesting for re-exam. So, you have to be very polite and you cannot show that you are uh, hurried, you are impatient. Hi sir is again a very uh, uncultured way of addressing your teacher unless the teacher is so close. So, it has to be same like respected sir or uh, respected ma'am depending on the a person whether it is lady or uh, a, a male teacher. This urgent matter very important in this telegraphic language should be avoided, proper sentences should be used and then give me re-exam. First of all any give directly asked without the polite marker please is really bad. Please give me re-exam. Please give me an easy question paper even if you use please is going to be absolutely bad and irrelevant because you cannot demand an easy question paper. You cannot first of all choose something as the uh, proverb goes, beggars must not be choosers. So, uh, you are already begging the teacher to consider for a re-exam and then you cannot choose how the question paper will be set for you. So, you cannot demand that. 
whether you have headache or whatever it is, whether you are able to focus on study or not, it is not the concern of the teacher. You have to really impress the teacher by your presentability, persuasiveness by giving real facts, so that the teacher feels concerned for you. So, when the teacher reads this one, lots of love, already the teacher is annoyed, irritated with you, where the teacher is expecting at least some obedience, yours sincerely, yours faithfully, yours obediently. But here ending with this is going to cause further irritation and then your uh, name. So, avoid this kind of mails which actually sends the wrong signals, which typically shows that you are lacking soft skills. On the one hand, you show that you are not concerned about it. On the other hand, the truth may be that you are not being told to correct yourselves. So, now you are getting a chance. So, try to uh, correct and then improve. Let us look at some more examples, how not to send emails. Look at this. This is also one of the mails that uh, I received. Look at the beginning. Good morning, sir, ma'am. I am Apurva Aladi from Bandwa SP. Look at the remaining part. I am not going to read it. First, take a quick look and then I am going to discuss this. Take one or two seconds to look at it and then I will just uh, discuss with you. I hope you have taken a quick look. Look at the way I want to look at this. Now, first of all, you cannot begin with good morning uh, in a formal one before uh, first saluting the person as respected ma'am or respected sir or dear ma'am and then you can say good morning sir, good morning ma'am. Okay. So, that should proceed and then this is again a bad mail because unlike the previous mails where I showed where the student used complete capital letters, here it is mostly small letters and no regard respect for punctuation and no capital letters where it is really required. For example, I should always be in capital letter because it is considered a royal pronoun and although it is a pronoun, you have to use capital letter for I and using I in small letter form indicates that you do not know the basics, the fundamental aspects of writing English language and this is an email, actually it was written to the vice chairman of gate. Okay, asking an inquiry. So, you are writing to somebody who is in such a high position and you should double check your mail and then you are trying to tell that you want to become an MBA candidate. So, today the common parlance in MBA whether it is GD or interview it is conducted in English and they are also assessing your English skills along with your soft skills and communication skills and this is the letter you have sent. Okay. I you missed it. What about your name? Name itself again capital letters are not there. Apurva, Aladi, A, A is missing. Then from this Bandwa, MP, sometimes SP. So, things are not uh, very clear whether it is MP or SP and then after that, whether it is M E N E is mean or in Hindi, I think she is trying to say Mene, B E, again it should be in B capital, E capital indicating bachelor's degree in electrical and electronics engineering, again all E should be in capital and then uh, Kia hai, whether it is Kia hai or Kya hai. So, even in Hindi when it is written in English, the candidate is not able to convey it correctly and then this Bandwa K S F I D D S, what is this institute, what is this college, what is the full form of this, how will the person know. So, college say and then after that there is no space some 2010, then Mene again 2011 whether it is me in English or may, obviously it is may for her, but then if somebody does not know Hindi, suppose a non-Hindi person is reading this and the person knows only English, 
the person will read this as me cat exam diya ta jisko result habi okay all this uh, part has to be in english january month it should be in capital j after january there should be space then year again me or me okay aya hai to and then m e r e is it mere in english or mere or meri so when somebody knows only english it's very difficult to read this mail cat score card me or me total percentile 48 hi or he again me or me banking and financial mba or mba okay if you want mba it should be m capital dot b capital dot a capital dot karna chahti hu by this time humor is reading would not feel like responding to this person and would also think that why do you want to do mba you are not even fit to do even the basics of uh, a course that needs high skills in terms of communication why do you think of mba so that's what a person will think immediately and then admission mil sakta hai part time mba karne ke lie k lie as opposite to truth lie in english or lie now if it is lie also do you write l i e a or l i e so even the hindi translated into english is wrong if as then mujhe please admission ki procedure bataiye or bataiye detail and fee structure mujhe email kar send kijiye thank you finally another phrase in uh, this one apurva aladi bandwa sp now the most important thing you should know is uh, this is where i say complete lack of presentability so untidy so ugly so dirty in terms of sending an email no uh, respect for punctuation capital letters and mixing of two languages assuming that the other person knows both of the languages when the standard one is accepted as english and when you are not sure whether the other person knows it or not if you don't know ask somebody who is able to draft the letter for you that is in terms of planning and preparedness prepare a good letter and then send it to the concerned authority so that will create a good impression for you now let's look at some more uh, examples that will make you understand what i mean by sending good emails now look at this this Uh, perhaps one of the worst emails that i got and it is almost everything that is wrong okay everything that i want to teach you i can teach only by discussing this email take a quick look and then i am going to analyze this if you look at it uh, two itself has got so many email ids cc has got so many email ids then it's a reply r r e e then summer spelling mistake is there and then capital use okay now let's see how we can closely analyze this and then uh, improve your uh, email writing skills and soft skills first of all two actually this person is sending to only one faculty asking for internship but look at how many email ids now this student is thinking you send emails to 1000 people at least one people will uh, respond to it now it's the other way around when you send to 1000 people everybody thinks that everybody else will respond and nobody responds to the person finally and obviously when you ask for internship your mail reflects your personality your mail reflects that you are lacking the five p's which are required in soft skills you are completely a person who lacks in soft skills and why would they call you and then keep you in internship and look at the cc that he has sent to dova okay dova is actually dean of academic affairs to whom he need not send it 
then V C H or J E E is vice chairman J E to whom he need not send it at all. Then director at ITK and then DD is deputy director. Faculty at ITK.ac.in will go to let us say around 500 people. All at ITK.ac. will go to around 10,000 people. Now, why is he sending? Whom is he asking? The 10,000 people will include students of first year, then some workers, staff. So, whom does he want uh, uh, internship to be given to him? Now, look at the subject. He has written re re. Okay. Actually, he has used some mail again and again got the email IDs. Although it is the first mail he is writing, he has written re re indicating reply reply, but it is not the reply. Then regarding summer spelling mistake, simmer he has written, training in your institution, your short form which is again wrong in a formal one and unnecessary dots, reference or capital is not there, doctor is written uh, without using capital letters. Then again assistant professor no capital letters and then dots unnecessarily used. And then if you look at the main body, he says he knows some Satyapal Singh, but then here somebody by name Vijay Paul Singh is referred to, which Singh is the one known to him and to which Singh he is writing whether Satyapal or Vijay Paul is not clear. Now, if you know somebody there, why is he writing to uh, which person here? Then look at the next one, he thinks writing in capital letters will indicate that it is very important, but it is creating a very bad impression because you cannot read it clearly. So, pursuing again uh, spelling mistake and then every time before a punctuation that is full stop, he has given space, actually all spaces will come after punctuation not before, that is after full stop or comma space should come. So, here after the full stop no space which is again wrong use of punctuation marks. So, we will seeing your response soon. Okay. So, it is not the right way to write, I am expecting a favorable reply and then saying you must message me at my number. Okay. Now, you cannot demand and it sounds like why should I uh, respond, the person who reads it will feel and definitely will feel whether it is arrogance or lack of politeness. And then even the last one if you look at it, the last phrase, love to see you, love in short form, see you abbreviated and where on Facebook, he is just telling the person whom he does not know and he wants internship and then he is saying just come and join me on Facebook, we will go for a chat. Okay. Now, obviously, you can know like this is utter ignorance of how to get internship. Maybe the uh, student is really good, really sincere, capable of doing very good internship with the concerned faculty, may contribute to IIT Kanpur also and may also gain from IIT Kanpur. But since the person lacks as how to present himself, there is no planning preparedness. So, complete lack of decorum in terms of writing an email and it sends the wrong signal and even if the person is recommended for this one, he is not going to get it. Having said this, should you be afraid of using emails? No, you should use emails effectively because in day and day the communication is invariably becoming suffused with emails, you cannot escape it. So, it is like uh, in uh, uh, places like uh, corporate offices and technological institutes, people have 4, 5 email IDs and then every day, every minute is uh, decided by using emails. You cannot escape it. So, escaping will actually keep you left out and you will be completely out of uh, this technological boom that has happened. Embrace technology, but with the knowledge that excessive of anything is dangerous. Use email in a very limited effective manner, use that to enhance your soft skills and personality, use that as an art that tells much about you, but not that as something that indicates the worst form of you as I have tried to show you in the previous ones. 
as a concluding thought, let us I just discussed a very serious one. Let us look at a small joke and then uh, let us finish this lecture. Look at this joke, it uh, goes like this. So, the boss and the employee, the employee has uh, come and the boss says, you should check your emails more often. I fired you over three weeks ago. So, in many corporate offices, even firing somebody that is dismissing somebody from job, terminating somebody from job can be sent through email and then they will just send the paycheck and then drop another letter and the scan letter go, can go there and then they need not come to the office at all. So, he just says you should check your emails more often. So, this guy has not checked it for about three weeks. Now, in the modern day, leaving email checking for three weeks could be too dangerous, you miss so many things. But at the same time, you need not feel anxiety, you need not feel uh, overly suffused with this kind of thing, if only you learn how to handle it. Now, in the next lecture or so, I am just going to discuss this, how we can form some email norms and adopt its etiquette so that you are able to send emails effectively. So, with this note, I conclude this lecture. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Have a nice day.